ontological relativity uh, uh, is, uh, <clears throat> let's see, p perhaps uh, it could be in a f f few words to begin with, uh, which will then need some explaining. Um, the point of it is that uh, the objects of which a theory deals with, talks about the objects that are values of its variables or uh, uh, referred to by its essential pronouns, um, can be changed arbitrarily. We can substitute for them any other objects we like, any objects, same or different, provided always that it's a one-to-one -one substitution. That is to say, uh, the different uh, uh, objects are uh, to be uh, uh, substituted for different objects, not, uh, not ever uh, two for the, uh, one for two objects. Uh, one to one is all that matters. Uh, and if that is carried through consistently for the whole universe, just doing it by straight reinterpretation, just a matter of words, uh, it turns out uh, that all the evidence uh, for the truth of a, a st statement in, in uh, science uh, will still stand up. The sentence will still be true if it was true before. The substitution just isn't going to change things at all so far as evidence is concerned, which makes it seem then that so far as evidence is uh, concerned, uh, uh, we don't we don't know what we're talking about. We just know about same and different among them. Uh, and the uh, and the proof of this is is uh, a trivial. Uh, you uh, as, as I said, it requires a a one to one relation, a one to one function. Um, uh, and uh, let's. Uh, call this uh, the, the proxy function. Uh, each object in our universe, uh, that, that all this, every stick, every stone, every atom, uh, every number, if we're admitting also abstract objects, as we really must for uh, mathematics that we apply in science, uh, everything, uh, gets its proxy, uh, and uh, which might be the same thing over again, might be or maybe we're making a, just a great permutation of the whole universe. Um, uh, and uh, um, all the evidence is going to come out the same. Uh, and you can see it in this way. Reinterpret, reinterpret the predicates oppositely to the way you're reinterpreting the objects. Uh, 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 instead of uh, saying that uh, 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 this rabbit is white, you say uh, the proxy of this rabbit is the proxy of something white. Uh, now, if you think about it, since proxy is one to one, that this rabbit will be white if and only if its proxy is the proxy of something white because it has only the one, uh, 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 the one and only proxy. Uh, it's just really an indirect way of giving the same old information. Uh, uh, therefore, uh, your, your uh, observation sentences uh, are going to uh, come out uh, uh, to be verified by the same uh, uh, stimulations that they were verified by previously, in spite of the fact that we've reinterpreted them so it's the, the proof is as, uh, as uh, rudimentary as that. It means that uh, here we're re reinterpreting uh, rabbit so that, uh, 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 that but, the, but, the, but the, chi the child is, is learning the word rabbit still by our pointing to the rabbit. It's just that we're now re describing that situation as saying that we're uh, really pointing to something that the rabbit is a proxy of. But... Uh, 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 it's just a matter of reinterpreting our words, using the same old words 
under the new interpretation. So that uh, what we have here is a curious sort of, uh, uh, well, paradox, not in the literal sense, because the paradox in the strong sense uh, is uh, always false, but uh, uh, anyway, a uh, strange, paradoxical, surprising uh, situation, which uh, it turns out to be just a matter of words. And so that's all the ontological relativity is, but, but it's philosophically significant because since the proxies can be chosen at any, uh, any arbitrary way, just so it's one-to-one, -one, uh, uh, we might draw the moral. Uh, we, never, uh, we never do know really what we're talking about. Uh, we uh, just know that, we're, uh, uh, that the things that we're talking about, when they're the same, when they're different from one another, and that's all that matters. And then that, be that begins to seem less surprising, less strange, if one goes on and thinks also about what, uh, uh, what good it does anyway to assume existence of objects. What good does it do anyway to declare this, that, and the other object, or to treat this, that, and the other uh, as a value of a variable, as a, uh, an object of, a, of an essential pronoun? Uh, and the answer to that is it introduces structure into our scientific theory. It introduces structure, uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and, and it introduces it in the following way. Uh, to begin with, a very weak logic, suppose uh, our logical particles or logical words are just uh, if, then, and, not. Uh, um, and uh, uh, how, how, how is, uh, what, what sort of logical inference can we get now? Well, take a, comp a compound, uh, if, uh, if P then Q, where P and Q are, are subordinate sentences, if P then Q, and then suppose that we affirm that we've we've decided we decided it's true uh, in that example, whatever it was, uh, and we also uh, find that P is true. Then we infer, and here's the logic at its most elementary: we infer that Q is true. Uh, that's a very weak sort of inference. It doesn't get us very far. Uh, um, uh, we say, if P then Q, but P, uh, we hardly even need to, to go on and say then Q, of course. Uh, we're not going to get much of a uh, uh, system from which ultimately we would infer uh, experimental conditions and uh, make the experiment in terms of observation sentences. Uh, but when terms, when uh, so-called quantifiers, like, st again, uh, somebody, something, everybody, everything, when these come into our language, uh, that's when we're going to have uh, uh, essential pronouns that can't be supplanted by their antecedents. That's where uh, the assuming of objects comes in. Uh, then we have a strong method of inference uh, uh, and uh, one that, uh, that can bring, bring an unlimited uh, uh, array of special cases together under a, a general heading. Uh, namely, uh, we have, uh, now we can say not just, uh, we have if P then Q, we have P, we get Q. We can also say we have for everything X, if fx, then gx. For everything x, if so-and-so of x, then such-and-such such of x. For everything, if it is so-and-so, it's a such-and-such. Such. Uh, and then, ah, here's one. Look, this was a so-and-so. Uh -huh. Well, it's a such-and-such. And, such. and this covers this, this pattern of inference. Uh, already em embraces a whole, a whole uh, unlimited bundle, or can do so, of uh, special cases. 
Uh, and that's where scientific generality comes in at its most primitive. And uh, uh, that then is the uh, uh, utility of assuming objects, the utility of what I call reification, making things in the conceptual sense now. Uh, namely, structuring science. 